if you feel like sex outside of marriage isn't good for you, don't do it. And for those of us who might think that sex outside of marriage isn't sinful, we have no right to judge those who hold whatever standards. All right, now, uh, Brenda Robertson, okay? This one, hmm. We're just going to listen to what he was saying. So this time around, he received a question online. And let's listen in to uh, his take on everything. Okay. He's the Reverend Brandon Robertson. He's, uh, he's a graduate of Moody Bible College. And here we go. If in your heart you feel like something is a sin and you do it, then for you it is sin. But it might not be sin for another person. So with that, I would say about sexual ethics, um, if you feel like sex outside of marriage isn't good for you, don't do it. And for those of us who might think that sex outside of marriage isn't sinful, we have no right to judge those who hold whatever standards. But again, I just want to bring it back to the thing that we should center on isn't the ins and outs, the rights and the wrongs, but is our behavior loving? Is it self-sacrificial or is it selfish? Is it consensual? Is it respectful? Does it draw us closer to God and to another? If your behavior does all of those things, then how can we say that those things are sinful? Um, and I think it all comes back to Jesus saying, you know a tree by the fruit it bears. If your sexual practice, whatever that looks like, is causing you and other people harm, then yeah, your sexual practice is sinful and you should stop it. But if your sexual practice is drawing you closer to God, to self and to other, then there should be nothing to be afraid of in that. That is according to Brandon Robertson. So... I don't even know what to say about all this. So according to Brandon Robertson, it's it's just up to you, okay? If you think that it is sinful, then don't do it. It's sinful, okay? But if you don't think that it is sinful, there's nothing wrong with it. Carry on. Keep moving. Where does it say that in Scripture? Huh? What Thou shalt not commit adultery, okay? It's in the, this is the commandment that God has given so I come, so Brandon is creating his own worldview over here. No, it doesn't matter. If other people think that it's sinful, like who cares what other people think? It's what the Bible teaches. That's what we go by. Brandon doesn't care about that. And yet he is a reverend. He calls himself, uh, you know, he, he calls himself a theologian. Okay, he calls himself a theologian. But who, which type of a theologian is going to be promoting that so long as your behavior is okay are you loving and then he had the audacity to bring in the tree, jesus right you shall know the tree by its fruit so what type of fruit is are you going to find in that particular tree that's behaving in contradiction to what the bible teaches what type of tree a good tree is going to bear good fruit a bad tree is going to bear bad fruit you cannot be having quote-unquote good fruit in a bad tree it doesn't work like that but brandon Robertson would have us to believe that you know what it can happen sometimes it can work like that and we're just here like okay brandon okay uh, some more tell us more tell us more so brandon is not done well this is one of my favorite questions because if you grew up in conservative evangelicalism, you probably grew up in Pauline Christianity, where Paul is more quoted and more followed than Jesus. And this is something I've been studying a lot recently, actually, because it is perplexing to me how even in all of my theology degrees, um, it was all centered on Paul and figuring out how to teach the church about Paul's theology to the detriment of what Jesus said. And I actually don't know if you know this, but if you read the New Testament, you find that Paul and Jesus often come into contradiction with each other. And a couple things about Paul that should be said. Paul never met Jesus, never heard Jesus preach. Paul only knows Jesus through secondhand knowledge. So as we're reading the writings of the Apostle Paul, we need to know who he is. We need to know his context. He's rem All right. So, Brandon, okay, according to him, this is the, the, the typical evangelical teachings. And he's trying to pit against Jesus and Paul. The only reason why Brandon is doing this, because he knows the writings of Paul, <laughs> in fact, he quoted Jesus himself, but he wants to create a false dichotomy over here, okay? But it's because, like, you know, Paul explicitly just calls him out because of his lifestyle. Jesus does the same thing, but he wants us to believe, like, oh, no, you know what I mean? Uh, don't believe the, uh, uh, the teachings of Paul, okay? 
and he wants to make it like, okay, this is Paul and then this is Jesus. It's the scriptures. We do. We know when somebody says like, oh, Paul wrote, you know, uh, three quarters of New Testament, right? But uh, who wrote the scriptures? It was the Holy Spirit who inspired these men to write. But everything that's written in the Bible is exactly what God wanted to be written. That's why we believe the scriptures is authoritative. It is actually the word of God. So Brandon wants to trick us here to, uh, so we should have like a distinction like, oh, okay, but this is Jesus and this is Paul. And according to him, uh, Paul never met Jesus. Okay. So let's take a look at the scriptures over here. If it's true, according to Acts 9, uh, Acts 9, 4, I'm going to read it real quick. Okay. And okay now as he went on his way this is talking about paul right now as he went on his way he approached damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground he heard a voice saying to him so so why are you persecuting me and he said who are you lord and he said i am jesus whom you are persecuting but brandon is telling us that paul never met jesus and by the way, this is the reverend, right? He's teaching to people, but this is what he's teaching them. And they have no idea. They have no idea because they're just going to believe whatever, you know, Brandon is saying because they don't know. So this is what happens. Like, we got to know, uh, we got to know our scriptures. Otherwise, we're just going to be uh, taken astray. Paul only knows Jesus through secondhand knowledge. So as we're reading the writings of the Apostle Paul, we need to know who he is. We need to know his context. He's removed from Jesus himself. And Paul and Jesus are preaching two different gospels. Both are important to Christianity, but one is the gospel that we live by, and one is the Apostle Paul's unique mission. Paul's mission was to tell the story of Jesus around the world. That was his goal. And so when Paul talks about his gospel, and if you actually read Paul's writing, he refers to it as my gospel, not the gospel. His gospel is the story of Jesus. His goal is to go into the parts of the world that nobody's ever heard about this guy named Jesus who lived in first century Palestine and tell them the story. And Paul sums up his gospel by saying Christ crucified, died, and risen. That's important. We need to know the story of Jesus. But the gospel, according to Jesus, is in Mark chapter 1. It says Jesus was going throughout the Galilee preaching the gospel and saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in this good news. The message of Jesus was quite simple. The God is doing a new thing in the world. God is calling us to a new way of living in the world. And Jesus' gospel is primarily social and ethical. It was about a new way of living, a new standard of justice. How do we live in a more just in generous world how do we create a better world that benefits so brandon roberts so i mean he just said a lot of things over there okay where is he finding this so he had to plug in the social justice in there so according to brandon robertson jesus uh the gospel was all about uh social justice uh i don't know okay you know the, uh you know biblical justice is what the bible teaches right and that's going to uh, encompass even the quote-unquote social justice we understand that but given this coming from brandon robertson okay don't just take it on its face value he has a proven track record of this is not even twist twisting scripture whatever we want to call it okay paul's gospel was primarily theological who was jesus why was he important both are necessary again but at Mission Gathering, we, we really center, I try to center in all of my teaching on the four Gospels, what Jesus actually said, what he actually did. And we use Paul as uh, a support for that message. But if Paul and Jesus ever come into contradiction, we're going to side with Jesus every time. So how is Paul and Jesus going to come into contradiction? When are they going to come in contradiction? Because the canon is already closed. Paul is the one who is actually writing, if the resurrection hasn't happened, then we are almost to be pitied for. He's the one who was actually persecuting the church, right? Because these people were following Jesus the way. And Paul's like, wait a minute, you guys, uh, you, you know, you're doing something different over here. I'm paraphrasing over here. And he had his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. So whatever Paul is doing, 
Uh, same thing he was telling to the Galatians. You know what? Even if somebody comes with another gospel, even if an angel from heaven, uh, may there be anathema. So Brandon has just introduced another gospel right in front of us. And now he's pretending that he's going with Jesus. He doesn't want to go with Paul. Where are you getting that from, Brandon? Hmm? Paul often debated with a lot of the early apostles. Paul and Peter disagreed with each other, and you read about their nasty fights throughout the New Testament. And Paul really didn't like James, who was the brother of Jesus. Peter... Lies upon lies upon lies. The situation that happened, uh, uh, Peter and Paul, that was the correct thing that Paul did, and it was in front of everybody. That's the only incident that's recorded in the scripture, Paul uh, confronting Peter. And I bet you, even if that wasn't Peter, if it was somebody else, Paul would have confronted them. Okay? And even Paul was saying, like, you know, even, was it, uh, was it what? The other guy who was with uh, Peter, was it uh, Cyrus? Was it Demas? Was also uh, swept in in that... Um, a double standard of Peter, be that as it may. That's good that Paul did that because Peter wasn't, uh, was li wasn't in keeping with the gospel, so Paul corrected him, rightfully so. Now he's introducing, saying that James and Paul, were, they, they didn't like each other. Where is the evidence? Where is he getting that from? Nowhere. James was the brother of Jesus. That is correct. That is true. So the only thing that I can deduce from this is usually people always say, oh, Paul is in contradiction with, um, with James because James says faith without works is dead, right? And uh, Paul is talking about, I know is uh, Romans, Romans 4, right? So he's talking about justification of Abraham before the law, before the circumcision, before Isaac, Okay, we are justified by faith. But if you are justified by faith, if you are a believer, if you're a Christian, your faith is going to have works. Okay, there's no way you're just going to be uh, saying like, okay, you know, I have faith, but faith without works is dead. That's what uh, James is talking about. Okay, and James, the book of wisdom. And Brandon, instead of teaching his congregation correctly, he wants to pretend like there is a contradiction. There is not a contradiction at all whatsoever okay scripture interprets scripture if we believe that god has spoken and there are no contradiction in the scriptures because god speaks to us clearly and he's done so through his word why should we believe what brand Robertson is telling us that paul did not like james and he has no evidence of that but we continue and james were the people who knew jesus best who spent the most time with jesus and if you read the writings of Peter and then you read the book of James, you find a message that's very, that mirrors exactly what Jesus said. James says, for instance, faith is good works. Paul comes along and says, that's not true. If Paul is contradicting James, who spent his life with Jesus, is the brother of Jesus, grew up with Jesus, knew what Jesus taught, I would encourage us to side with James. Now, this is a different way of engaging scripture. We do believe the entire Bible is inspired by God, but we also have to understand the cultural context of the Bible. We also have to understand who the people are. No, Brandon does not believe that. He's just saying that he believes that the, uh, the scriptures is inspired word of God. And he has just already told us here that uh, Jesus and Paul are in contradiction. James and Paul don't like each other. Peter and Paul don't like each other. But, oh, this is the word of God. Which is it, Brandon Robertson? Not only that, he actually just revealed himself here. Like, oh, this is a different way of uh, interpreting scripture. Yes, Brandon, it is a different way of interpreting scripture. <laughs> and it's wrong. But we continue. <laughs> ...that are writing and speaking in the Bible. And as we engage with that contextual lens, the Bible actually becomes a much more interesting book and a lot easier to understand in one regard, because you're not trying to make Paul and Jesus and James and Peter say the same thing, because they don't. And I actually spent way too much money and time getting my master's degree on this topic. What does the Bible say about sex and sexuality and gender? And the one thing that I've really come to believe about this is that if you read the New Testament, there's this kind of movement away from a rule-driven faith to a values-driven faith. 
We talk, we hear the Apostle Paul and Jesus speaking about not being held to the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. And so the Old Testament gave 612 commandments in Leviticus, and many of them had to do with sex and sexuality. And the Jewish people in the Old Covenant were kind of forced to live in these constraints. But as Jesus comes and brings this new covenant of grace, Jesus frees us from the burden of the law and instead sums up all of the law in one commandment, which is love. And then as we look at Jesus and the progression. Did you see the trick that he just played over here, right? And Jesus just deduced it to one. But Jesus deduced it to two, right? Love God with all your mind and soul and love your neighbor. But he just wants to stop there. That way, you, will, you know, love is love. It doesn't matter. Brenda. Progression of the New Testament. There are a number of values that it seems the early church centered around. We call them the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so the way I began to look at sexual ethics is... There are no rules of what's right or what's wrong. Now, that might be scary to hear in church. But what is important for Christians is that we center all of our behavior, whether it's sex or anything else, on the values of Jesus. Whatever we do, the question we need to ask is... And how do we do that? According to him, he just told us that there are no rules on our sexual ethics but we have to do we have to center our values according to jesus precisely how do we do that brandon robertson is it generous is it humble is it self-sacrificial if we judge all of our actions by those fundamental questions then i think we're going to start living a more ethical a more holy life but it's not about again Here's what you should do, and here's what you shouldn't do. And the problem is religious people really like rules and regulations. Right. And most of us really would prefer uh, a pastor to get up here and say, yes, sex outside of marriage is a sin, and if you do it, you're impure and in a state of habitual sin. I just don't think that's the way of Jesus. Yes, you hate him correctly, okay? Uh, enjoy sex outside marriage, because that's not how Jesus, that's not the way of Jesus. I mean, this is demonic. That's just the only way to put it. This is demonic. Because the scripture is clear, right? Like we know sex is only in the context of marriage because that's how God has designed it. Outside of that, it's definitely sinful. According to Brandon Robinson, that's not the way of Jesus. It's actually the other way around. It's the opposite. It's opposite. But he keeps hopping on on these lies after lies after lies and there's so many people who do follow him he has a huge following on tiktok he's a tiktok superstar he has a huge following on tiktok but uh brandon robertson does not believe in the scriptures he undermines the scriptures at every turn that he gets he will actually open the bible and tell you that oh he's preaching this like you see how he 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 was able just to you know articulate like you know uh the fruit of the spirit you know joy love peace all this you know what I'm saying? Patience. Yeah, he would do those things, but then he would just twist those things. And if you're not paying attention, you think, oh, okay, that's fine. That's not a big deal. Uh, it's fine. Oh, yes, I can see there's a contradiction here. Jesus said this, but Paul said this, you know, but he's just mixing. Remember, like the Bible, right? You 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 have history in there. You have the, the book of wisdom. You have the epistles. The, the gospels are talking about this is a biography of Jesus. So their focus is going to be different. So the focus of the gospel is not going to be the focus um, in, uh, in the minor prophets. Okay, it's going to be different. It's not. It's just not going to look the same. But all these things are pointing to what? To the story of God Himself. Brandon doesn't want even to talk about that. He doesn't believe in any of those things. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe on my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you. Thank you.